All right, let's go, y'all. Bring somebody with you. Come on, the choir. Let's fill it up. Let's go. Need everybody. A little short. Need everybody. That's the one, two. One, two. Try a song that we sing. saved. Amen. Isn't, that, isn't that a little better? But that sounds a little too religious nowadays. So they try to, that's a little too religious sounding. Saved, Lord Jesus, heaven, hell. So I began my journey with Christ a few years ago. Let's, you know what happened to me that night? I got saved. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Amen. Amen. from Emmanuel's bank. A sinner was plunged beneath the flood and God saved. Since then I'll walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken
Jesus, you know what your problem is? You're crazy. Amen. I mean, he'll bless you. He'll be what you need if you let him. Let's stand one more time while they come down. Turn around there and be friendly. Turn around there and be friendly to somebody. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's all get ready to give now. Hope you'll give to honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. We got some of our, a lot of people working in the back in the junior church. Y'all be sure and pray for the kids. Um, be thinking about camp, y'all. Let's everybody give this morning. Honor God and do right. It's a real blessing to have all of you visit. may have visitors I don't even know you here this morning. If you're here for the first time, God bless you. We'll get, make sure you get one of our visitors' cards. And uh, good to have Brother Jim and some other folks with us today. Uh, we're glad these, these guys are here today. They're here and they're ready if anybody wants to start any trouble. Uh, we're ready to take care of you. Miss Rachel and Miss Opal is here from Florida. And uh, glad to have them with us. And I wish I could read you some of the emails we get on YouTube. Uh, it wouldn't be proper English to read some of them, or, or even decent. Uh, so uh, let's enjoy the Lord uh, and do right, and he'll bless you for it, okay? What? That's what I thought. Uh, uh, let's enjoy the Lord this morning, do right, and he'll bless you for it, okay? Amen. All right, we ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We pray now that you'd bless us. And Miss Mary, man, it's Roger's mother, Michelle's mother. She had pretty serious surgery, and she's in the hospital in uh, Asheville. I visited with her in the hospital the other day and prayed with her, and she's doing good, but that's pretty, pretty serious. One kidney out, spleen out, and so continue to pray for her. All right, y'all. In the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance, everything's going to be all right. And Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able, and I'll go down in defeat. He said, Take a look behind you Just how far you come And every time you ask me Didn't I deliver you? Yes, you did So why would you be thinking That I wouldn't see through? Didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I? Spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven? She's talking to her father yes, in a house that was a home. She says, My bills are coming yeah, due, Lord. Need help this morning. Six days she hey, it's going to be a long, wicked summer. She hears Let's get in this hall this morning. Get help. Yeah, says, Hallelujah. Like Hallelujah. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll do this little thing yeah, for man. you. Today. He'll help you today. He'll help you today. Walk on the water, didn't I? Come the rage. You gotta let him. 
Tell him this morning he'll help you. I spoke to the wind. It hushed and I gave him peace. Didn't I run to rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you. To die for your sin. I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Sing it this morning. Now she's talking to her father in a house that. You know what, the Lord, He'll help you this morning if you'll let Him. He'll help you if you'll let Him. You need to come. You need to come. Just come on. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. Amen. Nobody ever cared for me like Jesus. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my, my, my. Thank y'all. Appreciate that this morning. Amen. All right. Let's get our Bibles open right quick here this morning. Uh, turn to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 6, please. Uh, with me, if you will. Now, I'm going to read this scripture, and then you're going to, Take you a minute to figure out what this scripture's got to do with the sermon, but I think you'll get it. Um, I got one preacher said one time, he said, man, I got me a good sermon if I could just find some scripture to back it up. <laughs> that, that's not what this is. There's a, there's a point I'm using this scripture. Second Kings chapter six this morning, and look at verse number uh, one. This is a great story in the Bible, but I'm gonna use it not like it's normally told, Okay. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, like cutting a tree down, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Now the miracle there is in verse 6. But I'm going to deal with verse 5 this morning where it said that axe head uh, the, came off of the, the handle and went into the water. And I want to preach this morning on the subject, flying off the handle. There's a reason we use that term. And this is going to be a sermon today about getting mad and losing your temper. I'm sure there's nobody in here Whoever gets mad, do you? 
I figured they wasn't. This is for them backslid internet heathen uh, that watch me on, online. But I'm going to talk about your temper this morning. Um, if your wife's sitting there beside you and she gets mad, and wonder why this is for her. If your husband's sitting there, old grouch, he's here this morning. Somehow or another, you got him here. This is for him. This is, <laughs> we're going to have it out right here before I even get going. Calm down. Everybody calm down. Now, the Bible talks about this. Now, and here's the illustration I have here this morning, an ax. This, if this is on you, they'll, they, I'll tell you what they'll do. They'll take a little shot of me doing this in here and they'll put it all over the internet. Mark my word. He's an ax handler. He's threatening to cut people's heads off. He's, he ought to be investigated. One guy put on there, he said, uh, I don't know if Danny Castle is just a, uh, uh, a danger that the government should be investigating or he's just crazy taking them people for all their money. It's both. Uh, I mean, uh, now look here. This guy, here's an ax. Don't worry, this is not a real ax. I want to get. I almost bought me one flea market, and I was going to use a real one, but I'm going to use this little one. That's, I forgot somebody gave this to Marty, and was it you, Corey? Uh, she gave it to Marty, and uh, anyway, that's a bad looking thing. Now they're cutting down trees like this. Wow, that's the way they used to have to do them. Wow, wow, wow. And when one guy said, "Man, that thing won't come off," when he slings it, the axe head comes off and goes in the water. Got you, didn't I? Now. If he, watch this, he's going to keep cutting. Man, it is hard. You know how many times you'd have to hit a tree with that to cut it down? A million probably. It'd be hard to cut the tree down when the ax head flew off. Now, I don't know why they call getting mad flying off the handle. It might be because you, you, you just beat, beat, beat and can't get nothing done with it. So I'm going to talk to you about your temper this morning. Now, by way of introduction, give me your attention, please. Every man or woman ought to have a temper. There are certain things that ought to make your red blood boil. Really. A man is no good. A man ain't worth a dime that don't have a temper. But a man ain't worth a nickel who can't control it. Now, it's like a fire extinguisher, only to be used in emergencies. I'm telling you, if you're right with God and these videos and rap and rot, filthy manure, 50 shades of manure, junk like that right there, if that don't make you fighting mad, you're not much of a person or a Christian. You're not. I mean, if that don't, they're burning Bibles. They turn crosses upside down. Uh, they mock God and curse Jesus. Put a goat on the cross. Put a rabbit on the cross. That certain stuff like that, man, that ought to make us fighting mad. Uh, I remember one time, the Lord Jesus Christ himself went into the temple. You read the story, right? Into the temple and the meek and lowly Jesus. You never see that part in the movies. Uh, comes in like this and them guys got a flea market set up in there and they're selling things and making money. Here comes Jesus into the temple and just does like this and goes and turns the table over and stuff goes flying everywhere and then he makes a whip and starts running people out. Jesus did that. I would love to hear Joel Osteen preach that sermon. Would that not be the coolest thing ever if Joel, and now, now we're going to see how Jesus, they must have put that whip in his hand, people. He must have been, they must have drugged him up the night before. Jesus would never, I'm talking the lowly Jesus of Nazareth made a whip and run him out, out, out of the temple. He turned the money changers over and to show he could control his temper, he said to them that sell doves, take them out of here. He's under control. He was not out of control. He said, this needs to be done and I'll just do it. Bam! And that's, that's a temper. What does the Bible say? Be ye, help me, be ye angry and sin not. Uh, it's, it, there's some things that ought to make you angry, but you're not supposed to sin. Okay, you got where I'm coming from? Somebody said, he is a fool who cannot get angry, uh, uh, but, uh, but he's a wise man, man who will not. That's right. Be angry and sin not. All right, here we go. How many fights have been caused? How many men set in prison today? 
because they couldn't control it in a fit of rage and shot somebody or killed somebody or assaulted somebody. How many people right now this morning are, have, have been in divorce courts this week simply because they could not control their temper? Now, number one, I want to say this morning, what happens when you fly off the handle? People say, I just come in here and he just flew off the handle. I don't, I don't know why they call it that, but I think I'm going to tell you. Number one, you, here's what happens when you, when you get mad and lose your temper. Number one, you go temporarily insane. That's right. Why do you think they call it mad? You know what mad means? Somebody said he's mad. You, the mad, definition of that is crazy. So when somebody, man, I come in there and I got some mad, you mean you went crazy? That's what you're doing. You temporarily go insane. Listen to all these words we use to describe somebody who loses their temper. Ill. Boy, he was ill. That means you're sick. Hot under the collar. Berserk. Went into a rage. Blew his stack. I just picture like a cartoon, something blowing out the top of your head. Like that. That's exactly what happened. Man, daddy come in, pow, he blew up. Like that. You know, like that. He, he was in a rage. He blew a fuse. He pitched a fit. Like that. And that, that's what happened. Boy, when mama find out, out, she pitched the awfulest fit. How many of us have said that? Why do we use words like that? A fit? Mama went into a fit. You, lose, you temporarily, people, lose your mind. You're out of control. Danger is D with anger on the end of it. Your face gets red. Your neck swells up. Your, fi your fist clenched. Your blur you have blurred vision. That's what they say. Your vision blurs when you get real mad. Uh, uh, now, does your mama ever get like that towards you? Does your uh, wife ever get that towards you? Uh, have you ever heard somebody say, man, I'm so mad I couldn't see straight? You ever heard that? Where does that come from? I was so mad I couldn't see straight. Well, you, you look you cross-eyed when you get mad. Uh, one eye look one way and one look the other. I don't know which one you've uh, You hear about them two guys like that? One well, there's two guys like that. One eye looked one way and looked the other. Not being, I don't mean to be ugly. And there's two of them. And they come running down the street, run smack into each other. And one of them said, why don't you look where you're going? Nothing said, why don't you go where you're looking? That might be the way when you're, when you're mad. <laughs> might be when you're mad, uh, you can't see straight. Blurred vision, blurred vision. And pitch the fit, angry, mad, crazy. Uh, 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 there, there's, no, there's no one is reasonable. Listen to me. Nobody is reasonable and mad at the same time. And nobody is reasonable and mad at the same time. You, you go insane. Number two. You say things that hurt. Isn't that the truth? Haven't we all done that? You say things that hurt. An angry man seldom reasonable and vice versa. Uh, anger makes your mouth work faster than your head. Mom, I hate you. I wish I'd have never met you. You got drop dead. But you say things. Now listen, there's an old saying that says sticks and stones may break my bones, but words and everything, that's not true. That's not true. Words do hurt. Words do hurt. I can tell you stuff people said to me 15 years ago, and it's just like it was yesterday. You can hurt somebody with your words when you can't control your mouth. Sticks and stones would feel good compared to some things people say to each other. Amen? A uh, lady said one time, uh, she came to, I think it was Billy Sunday, and she said, well, I get mad and I blow up, but, I, but I'm over it quick. Like that makes it all right. You ever anybody say that? I get mad, but I'm over it. He said, well, show us a shotgun. It's over quick. But the damage is done. Sticks and stones will hurt you. Words go down deep into a person's heart and it wounds them. And brother, hard as they try, that might not ever, ever get over it. Somebody said this, I spoke a word in anger to one who was my friend. Like a knife, it cut them deeply. A wound that was hard to mend. That word, though thoughtlessly uttered, I really do regret. But its echo lives and memory gives the recollection yet. You say a lot of things 
a lot of things when you're mad that hurt people. And you say, well, they deserved it. Maybe they did, but it's not your job to punish them. Number three, you do things you regret. You do things you regret. You hit somebody. Have you ever, have you ever hit somebody? Don't raise your hand, Lord, I know what kind of bunch of rednecks we got in here this morning. Uh, uh, and, and, and terrible. I mean, I mean you, you think about it. I, I had this guy do me bad, bad wrong one time. Bad, bad. Long, long, long time ago. Man, I had hate in my heart and I had to pray about it. And one night I dreamed that I was beating him up. And I mean, that I was enjoying that in my dream. That's awful, isn't it? I, I'm telling you the truth. I was, I was, I was 20-something years old, and I had that guy down, and I was going, bam, 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 just hitting him in the face. Boy, that was a blessing. It felt like a blessing. And, and, and I woke up, and I thought, oh, my goodness. And I sure am glad I didn't do that. I'm glad I didn't do that. I'm glad I didn't wind up getting assault charges pressed on me. I'm glad I, uh, I, did, I'm glad I didn't really, really do that. You do things you regret. As I said, there's a many a man sitting in prison this morning. He's, I mean, good-hearted people a lot of times, but they are in prison today because they did not control their temper and they're doing cry, time for a crime. You can commit a crime of passion. You can commit a crime of rage. You can commit a crime of, of, of jealousy or something that you will pay for the rest of your life. If you're not right with God and have your temper under control by the Holy Spirit, brother, I'm telling you, you can do things that you regret. Not only that, you don't accomplish anything. You really don't accomplish anything. As a matter of fact, uh, they say that if a man, they that fly into a rage usually make a bad landing. As a boy at school, I remember this big old bud. He, he had a real bad temper. And I remember doing this when we was growing up. We'd go out and play softball uh, for, for recess. And he's a big old boy like that, you know. And he'd get mad and he'd strike and he'd miss it. And we'd laugh, I remember. And, and he'd get strike two and he'd miss it again. And we'd all go around and say, ha, <laughs> woo! Oh, you couldn't hit a boat with a bowling ball, a bat with a baseball bat. You're blind. That, that. And we give him down the road. And he looked over at us. His eyes got red. His neck swelled up. And the next picture, I'm going to kill that. Ah! That's what he struck out. He don't accomplish anything. When you get mad at work, boss man, when you get mad at work, employee, wife, you don't accomplish anything. Years ago, I had this old lawnmower, and I bought the lawnmower at a flea market because it was too tight to go buy one at Walmart. And I, bought, I paid $35 for it at the flea market and took it home. And I remember I, I spent more time trying to start that stupid lawnmower than I did mowing grass. I, yeah, <laughs> Lord, will you let it start this time? I choked it. I pushed that little little bubble. I I I done it. I I shook it around, turned it up so gas is running. I I put, and it was hot and sweat dripping down. Have you ever been out when it's 99 degrees in shade and there ain't no shade and a lot more weed eaters? Same thing. I want to a stupid weed eater in the palm. I mean, I'm telling you, I jerked on that thing. I jerked on that thing, and I got mad. I felt it. I felt fire, felt fire shoot through me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. I got mad. I said, I'll start this blessed thing. Pound! I went the string right out in my hand. Boy, I fixed it then, didn't I? I had to pay somebody. Take that thing apart and right, put the string back on it. That's what you accomplish when you can't control your temper. Amen. We're just getting going good here now. I know a guy. I know a guy. He's a preacher. He's trying to start a motorcycle. And he's trying his motorcycle and he's going, rrr, rrr, rrr. Done that about 15 times. And he got out one like that and he went, pow. It really fixed that motorcycle. He come into church like this. You don't accomplish anything. Isn't that sad? I know I read about a fella out in Texas who got robbed of some money, and a guy they robbed they robbed this guy. He got so mad that he hired lawyers and spent thirty 
$1,000 tracking them people down that got his money. He spent more money, spent 30000 He was so enraged, I'll get them if it's the last thing I, it might very well be the last thing you ever do. Lord, it's getting quiet in here. LeBon James. This week, you know, this week, they had the, the, the NBA Finals, and I didn't even know this until the Lord just let me see it last night or this morning or something. I didn't know about it because I didn't get to, I watched part of the game. I, I like to see them, boy, when they're battling it out like that. And they got beat. And, uh, and uh, at the press conference, LeBon had a, had a, had a, uh, something or another, some kind of brace something over his hand. And he said this, and they said, you have been playing with a broke can. Can you comment on that? And here's what he said. I heard him in the press conference. He said, well, after that first game, I was frustrated. He said, this is self-inflicted. You know what that means? He balled up his fist and hit the wall or a brick after the first game. And that's the game he had 50 points in or something like that. And he wasn't that great. I mean, it's hard to shoot basketball with a broke hand. And that's your shooting hand. You got to do it like that. You can't just do like that. Anybody that does like that don't know how to shoot. You have to do that. You have to do that. And, and he, he played the other three with a broke hand. Broke his own hand. Man, did that really accomplish a lot. There's stories in here this morning where y'all have done something stupid or slammed the car door or slammed the window down and broke it and had to pay for it because you couldn't. I'm telling you when, you, when you, when you fly off the handle, you don't accomplish anything. You know what he said? My emotions got the best of me. I don't know why he didn't just hit Jr. I won't go into that right now. Uh, I don't know. But uh, uh, listen, or the referee. Look, people, if you're going to hit something, don't hit a tree. Trees are tough. That bark will chew the skin off of your hand. How many of you have ever done something really stupid because you was mad and it wound up tearing something up? Well, we all have. Broke a window, put your fist through something, done something done. Now, secondly this morning, how to keep from flying off the handle. Acts. Um, how am I going to keep that thing from doing that again? I'm going to give you four little things here this morning, three or four, that uh, I'm going to throw this thing if I can't find it. Uh, I'm going to show you this morning how you got to keep from flying off the handle. How are you going to keep? There's your temper. That thing's sharp. It's good to be able to cut stuff down, but if it flies off, it ain't going to do you no good. Here we go. Four little things to help you this morning. This will make you a better husband. This will make you a better wife. This will make you a better employee. This will make you a better boss. This will make you a better daddy and mother who gets mad and blesses her kids out and smacks them or something. And the only time you whip them is when you're out of control. That's the time you should never whip them. You don't whip a kid when you're out of control and got a headache and aggravated and things ain't going right and you finally just blow up and hit them. That ain't time you spank them. You spank them when they need it. Not just when you're having a bad day. Here we go. Four things right quick, and you're going to learn how to control your temper. Number one, grow up. That's a good start right there. Little babies that are 30 and 40 and 50, you've got to grow up sometime. Grow up. We have in this country a bunch of big old, overgrown, spoiled baby brats that's had everything they've ever wanted uh, right in their lap and spoiled rotten and this ain't right, this ain't right. You know what a man said one time? He said, if your religion ain't done nothing for your temper, it ain't done nothing for your soul. That's a strong statement. You say, well, Brother Danny, you just don't know what it... Don't, don't start on me, please. If I told you just my weekend, Lord have mercy. We had eight people staying at my house this weekend. I got up yesterday, 
went, done, went visiting, bus route, done with stuff, trying to study for today, trying to get this message ready. I had a, f- a funeral for, uh, for uh, Amy's brother over there down in, in, in Granite Falls. I didn't get home to almost 5 o'clock, 4.30, something like that. And then we ha- I had this pipe on my water heater that w- was leaking and leaking. And uh, I said, I said, Danny, it's, it's leaking. And I told Kelly, I said, I'm going to have to turn the water off a little while. I'm going to fix this thing. I was tired. I had to preach this morning. I had to preach tonight. I, I mean, I, I, I was, I, I got to preach a youth camp in Georgia. I was starting tomorrow night, tomorrow evening. I hadn't packed my clothes. I had to, and, and all of us, I said, I'll fix that thing. And so I took it loose. I got me some of that flex tape. Uh, that they advertise on TV that's supposed to stop Niagara Falls if you just put a little piece on it like that. And I put that. I took that. I took that flex tape. I bl- I took a fan out of Anthony's room and I bl- blowed it dry for a little while. And then I wrapped that around there. And I wrapped that around there. Took some wire and and twisted it and twisted it. Hold them two pots together. I said, "Bless God, I'll fix that. I've got work to do. I've got to go off and preach." And I, I got up in my room. Uh, we're going to f- fix hot dogs because we got folks from Florida. Folks from Anthony's there. Ethan and Marty's there. Aniston came over and Kelly said she said honey pipes busted it, it was it wasn't just dripping it was squirting water all over the place it was coming on the floor in the kitchen I said okay let's get this fixed so I had to turn water off nobody can take a shower I worked and worked and worked and worked could not get it fixed I said I'm sorry y'all no showers if you can't clean you just ain't clean Go jump in the pool. I got up at 7 o'clock this morning, took with a T-shirt on and everything, and went and jumped in the swimming pool. It took my, this morning. Now, if I'd have been y'all, I would have sent a text and said, sorry, our water's out. We can't make it today, if I'd have been y'all. But that's another sermon. That's another sermon. That's what you would have done. But you're the preacher. But you're a member. Be weird if I was the only one here. You're a member. You would have said, I've got to leave tomorrow. I've got this to do. I've got to pack my clothes. I've got to, I can't make it this morning. But I went and jumped in, in the pool, soaked up, reached up in there and soaped up my arm, reached up in there and soaked up. I mean, that's the worst stinking part, you know. I washed my hair and jumped out. I was freezing to death. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, I ain't going to church nasty. So I got ready. Then the phone started ringing. Bus tire flat. Uh, and also a bunch of other stuff we won't talk about right now that was driving me crazy. And the devil said, you going to preach on losing your temper, preacher? I said, shut up. I'll get mad at you. I'm telling you. I, I ain't even telling you half of it. Or a third of it. It's awful. It's awful. I was ca- this what morning while young y'all was laying in the bed. I was carrying buckets of water through the house to pour in the commode. Every commode in the house was full. So we had eight people standing there, and I was flushing them and tearing buckets of water, dripping on these pants right here. They had a wet spot right there, and I carried one upstairs to flush so it won't smell like a blessed sewer when we walk in there after a while. And the devil said, well, you're really ready this morning, ain't you, preacher? I said, well, we'll see about that. I said, I've preached in a lot worse shape than this before, old smutty face. Amen. Let the church roll on. Amen. And I'm here this morning with the joy of God in my soul, with Jesus is real. I'm glad I didn't stay home. I'm glad I didn't text Brother Derek and say, I can't make it today. Can you handle this? I'm glad I didn't say, I'm aggravated. You'd have said, I just ain't going. And the devil said, Woo! You know what? <laughs> that boy's in it, ain't he? He's right in every word I'm saying. Number B. Scroll down to B. You can understand that better, can't you? Here's what you do to, number one, you grow up. Stuff happens, people. And it's going to happen next week. 
and it's going to happen the week after that. And it's going to Are y'all listening to me? Something's going to happen next week. Get used to it. You know when nothing ain't going to happen? When we get to heaven. Something's going to happen. And the next week and the next and the week, grow up. Number two, think before you speak. Somebody said this, count to ten, when you're, re- when you're mad, count to ten before you speak. When you're real mad, count to a hundred and then don't speak. When you're real mad at somebody, the best thing to do is write it down on a piece of paper. I said Abraham Lincoln had a secretary at one time and somebody said some bad stuff and he, he said, I'm so mad at them, I could kill them, I could kill them. He said, write, a, write it down in a letter. So I hate you. I hope you drop dead. Da, 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 da. He said, "You feel better?" He said, "I guess so, a little bit. I put. I, I, I just. I just want to give it to." Him. He said, "Let's let it, wait a couple of days and then throw it in the trash can. Get it out. Write it down. Throw it in the trash can. Do you know it's natural to shout back if somebody shouts at you? It's human nature." Somebody says, well, you're doing nothing, none of your business. You know, that's how people get married. What, I mean, that's scriptural. The Bible said in Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turneth away. It's hard to argue with somebody that just says, yes, and we shouldn't be fussing. Oh, God. It makes you want to just smack them, don't it? Get all religious on me. I know, I know, I know you're full of the devil and trying to just get me. Somebody said this. Somebody said this. They said, when you get real mad at somebody, repeat the alphabet. A, B, C. Not like, not like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, you know, Not like that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, 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 I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, I'm going to kill you. Q, R, X, N, no, no. Think before you speak. Number three, here's one. You remember how patient God's been with you. I use this illustration. They said, a great man. God will never use you greatly if you can't control that temper. I used to have a temper. When I, pretty much when I was about 22, 23, I lost it when I was 25 or 6. I mean, I still got it, but I don't, I'll never get mad no more. I mean, lose it mad. I have maybe two or three times in 30 years. Lord, he broke me from mine. And he'll get yours if, you, if you'll let him. But I remember a great man said one time, he was working upstairs and he was writing, and the kids were downstairs screaming and hollering and turning over things. You that have got kids, you know how they'll knock things over and hollering, you know? It's, it's like that in our house now. It was quiet for a few years. Now here we go again. Uh, kids running through the house. We're, we're going to have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 12 at my house tonight. Because me, like an idiot, is taking seven of them with me on a trip tomorrow to Georgia. Good old brother Danny, asking for trouble as always. And I, he said, the kids down there are just tearing the house down. And they said, don't that get on your nerves? You up here working? He said, how wonderful it is to hear the children playing and know that they are well. Listen, you got to be on something to react like that. Some kind of sedative or valium or something. I don't know. What if it, but that man had it. Can you believe it? How wonderful to hear the children playing and know that they are well. When you can let people screaming and hollering all around you, you know, the truth is most of y'all don't ever do nothing to your kids until you lose your temper, and that ain't the right time to discipline them. They're scared of you. That's why everybody said, don't let mama get Oh, let's don't tell. Don't let mama hear this. Because she's crazy. Remember how patient God's been with you. Let me give you a scripture. James 1, 19, 20. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to what? Wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You are unrighteous when you're mad. Just remember this. The Lord could knock your brains out. Well, I'm so mad at them, I could beat their, you know, he, he can beat your head in too if he wants to. And mine too. Is anybody here that don't deserve getting your head beat in? Donna. The moonshiner, come on. You there, everybody here deserves to have our head beat in. Really. 
You know what the bad part about this is? I'm up here screaming, hollering, sweating, all this. I worked all week trying to get this ready for y'all, and most of y'all go right out of here and ignore everything I've said and say, well, it's just me. One guy said that, it's just me. And you ain't never going to get no further with God until you deal with this. Number four, and I'm done. Remember that the things in this life are really not that important. There's nothing down here that important. There's nothing down here worth falling out for. Getting mad, cussing somebody out and losing a good friend. I know people right now, close to home, but I, that are mad and won't speak to each other over a little strip of grass about that wide. They got mad. Uh, your, your vehicle was parked across my land. Get it off! I ain't going to do it. I, well, I've been mowing this little strip of ground. I ain't going to mow it no more. It's this high. That wide strip. Of, you know what I told my neighbors? There's fussing about that. And I own the land. You know what I told them? I said, look, y'all. It's just this much land. If the man's truck sitting on your land, don't worry about it. Big deal. If I ever need it, I'll tell you. Don't fuss with your neighbors. I said, we might need each other one of these days. Somebody's house might be on fire. You, know, you might need them neighbors one of these days to take you to the hospital. You done showed yourself and, and acted like, I mean, listen, my neighbors up above us, they built a swimming pool one time, and Daddy wound up selling about 12 acres of his land to my cousin, Joey, Joey Bean, and they surveyed it and found out half the neighbor's swimming pool was on Daddy's land. And Daddy's from where the Hatfields and McCoys are from. I was proud of him. You know what he said? He said, don't worry about it. If we, ever, if we ever sell it or anything, don't worry about it. It was on that part that he sold Joey, so it didn't matter, I guess. But, but you know what? It really don't. It really don't. A strip of ground, I'm not touching it. I'll let it grow over the house before I'll touch it. Come on now. Come on now. I'll let the tires burn off that car before I'll... Now, calm down. You better be glad God ain't been up in heaven saying, I ain't going to give him nothing else. And you better be glad God don't treat you like you treat other people. Amen, Amen. Amen Brother Danny. Remember, the things in life are not that important. Boss asks you to do something. Parents tell you to do something. I've seen girls say, I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out with my boyfriend. I'm go out. Mom said, no, you're too young. You ain't got to and go in the, in the bed and go and kick their feet on the bed. Listen, you little crybaby, you have proved your mother is right. You better play with baby dolls a few more years. You're not mature. If you can't even control your temper, you don't have no business dating. Amen? Well, y'all look like you've all been refreshed and blessed by the word of God this morning. And this is a feel-good message to make you feel good about yourself. But I'm going to tell you something. We're going to keep that thing on there. You might need it one of these days. God will bless you for it. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Amen. Every head bowed. Miss Desi's coming. Just play something softly. Won't sing. She's just going to play something softly this morning. You say, now, preacher, I am not coming to altar because people will think, well, let them think.